welcome folks to the SEV Business Solutions webcast. My name is Paul Raggio. And I'm Lisa Raggio, and we're with One True North Leadership and Business Coaching Solutions in Santa Clarita Valley. And we are so proud to partner with The Signal to be bringing you regular conversations with authentic community leaders. And we're excited to be talking to Selena Thomas today. She is a fellow podcaster and webcaster for The Signal. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation with her, so stay tuned. We're going to do that in just a minute, uh, but before that, Paul has an announcement. Folks, we offer a complimentary business health checkup, and this is where you have the opportunity to sit with us, and we have a formal questionnaire that you can go through, and there's about 80 questions that really touch every part of your business operations, and we just talk through if you have challenges and if there's something that we may help you with, but we assure you that you're going to walk out of there with some value. So we encourage you to take advantage of it. Just go to our website, onetreenorthcoach.com, or you can call us or email us, and we'll be glad to respond. Lisa, you want to introduce our guest? I'm very excited to introduce our guest. Our guest mm -hmm. is Lena Thomas. She is the CEO and founder of Six, De Six Degrees HR Consulting, and I'm going to give you some information about her background. She is an 11 year resident of Santa Clarita. She is a busy mother of three teenage daughters, which we know she is very proud of. A CEO and founder of Six Degrees HR Consulting, host of a podcast on The Signal, and a recent candidate for Santa Clarita City Council. Selena has a master's in human resources and is a nationally certified human resource specialist. She works closely with many local companies, employment attorneys, and insurance brokers to assure the compliance and infrastructure of small businesses. Selena was recently elected as the newest board member of the Heart Education Foundation. Her passion for people, their companies, and their success is the foundation of her company. Selena's focus now is to continue to highlight, advocate, support, and celebrate the businesses of Santa Clarita Valley and the real people behind those businesses. Her plan is to continue to pursue public service, assist in the recovery of small businesses from the impact of COVID-19, and continue to franchise her company so that other communities have a six degrees HR consulting to assist them in their HR related needs. Selena, it is a pleasure to have you be uh -huh. on the program today. Thank you. It sounds like a lot, and I, I really take you know small bites every day, and then you end up getting the full menu that you just read. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm so happy to be with you guys. Well, that's a great way to express it because we're foodies. So just breaking it <laughs> yes. in terms of food makes us happy. Yes. Hey, so we always start, as you know, with why. So tell us about your why for Six mm -hmm. Degrees HR Consulting. Sure. The why was because I have a passion for people and um, it made sense in respects to the specialty that I have as an individual. As you read, I'm a human resource specialist and I knew in working in companies that did not have infrastructure that this was a niche market, that there was somebody that could create a company that serves small companies in this area. It's kind of the Achilles heel, the Achilles heel of companies, the, the HR area, it's you need it. And when it's not working, you you have to fix it. You have to have surgery and you have to delve in. And it is an, an integral part of a company. And from the culture of a company and the processes allows a company to grow. If you have an expert that is responsible and delegated in that area, then you can focus on the growth. And I think that's your expertise is helping people grow and kind of setting aside the things that are troublesome. And more often than not, it's kind of a formula that I've found to be true. Small companies do not have HR. They get going, they figure we'll deal with it later. And before they know it, they're in a crisis with an employee. And so that's how I built Six Degrees um, in Santa Clarita very fertile ground here for small businesses and so i then also became one so i'm really proud of what we've grown here and uh, part partnering with people that had that same passion is important i'm going to share a story selena mm -hmm. I, and i haven't shared this with you before we had a great discussion with you last week but sure 
so the first company I started, there was just two of us. There was an operations uh, fellow and myself, and we were bidding on contracts. We won a large contract out of Fort Sam Houston to uh, bring on board 50. There were no incumbent workforce. We had to bring on 50 new employees and put them through a series of, of uh, qualifi qualifications before they actually became employed. Mm -hmm. And we were lost without, the first thing we did was outsource the HR activity associated with it. We were absolutely lost with the onboarding process and sure. just going through step by step what we needed to do to make sure that not only we were establishing the right organizational culture, sure. but that we were minim minimizing our legal exposure throughout the whole process. It, it was that first contract that I realized for businesses, doesn't matter how small you are, if, right. if you bring on an employee, you should have an HR expert guiding you through and they should be on your bench. I mean, that's Absolutely. something. So, so talk through some of those hiccups. It's a great story. Businesses. Yeah. That it's a great seen. story in that it's a story that you hear repeated and in people that start businesses have a great idea, great service or great product. And then it's time to bring the people to deliver it, but you don't know how to manage the people or support them in the employment relationship. And so when you are developing that and saying outwardly to not just people that you want to have come work for you, but your consumers or clients, it says a lot about you that you've taken the time to have the infrastructure to develop um, sound employment for people. When you think about this country and it being built on small businesses and the impact from COVID affecting that particular area more than anyone else, you realize, just like you did in that story, how important human resources is. And if you think about just the term HR, the human parts first. Mm -hmm. And so we talked earlier about having a passion for people, understanding that, that, you know, there's a purpose in everything that you're doing. It was very natural and easy for me. And just applying the technical part, which is the what you don't know will hurt you. And that's yeah. part of my discussions when I'm working with employers that haven't really captured what you found out quickly that you are subject to, to bad things for the things that you don't know. Right. Because you have whatever it is, a great idea or a product, you know that well. You can read it off the back of your hand. But it's the what you don't know that can take that dream away from you or compromise it because you focus now on what you didn't know, what you didn't do right, just simply because you didn't engage someone that's all they're designed to do is know that. So Even that's and the, I mean, yeah. just the basic thing of an employee handbook and how Absolutely. important that is to have as a uh, governing foundation within your within your business. How important that is. It's like the Bible of a company. I use that for people because they reference uh, that as a foundation personally. So it's an analogy that people can immediately relate to. And mm -hmm. so when you're writing it, you're writing it in a customized way, industry specific, and of course, specific to what you want to accomplish within your company. And so it becomes the Bible. It becomes that one tool that you're not only referring to, but you're telling all of your employees to reference as who we are, what we are, how we do it. And so obviously it spawns into other things when it comes to job descriptions and standard operating procedures, but that really is the start of, of the employment relationship. And as I think I mentioned before, the first thing in employment litigation that someone subpoenas me for is someone's handbook. What did the employee have as a reference to understand your company? And in the absence of that, you could just imagine how vulnerable you feel when you don't have it to send and what you're possibly subject to litigation wise because again california as we know is a litigious state favorable to employees mm -hmm. and if they're absent of that it's already um volatile for an employer 
at best. Yeah, when so we met why. Um, recently, you really enlightened us. Number one, I think, I, I'm not sure a lot of small business owners know in regards to what you said for an employee handbook. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we know that your business has a, uh, a national reach to it. And mm -hmm. you really gave us some numbers pertaining to California. Mm -hmm. You know, what? Uh, when Paul was talking about, we know a lot of sm small business owners, they yes. go into business knowing that they need to have a CPA, uh, that they need to have a business attorney that they probably um, consult with at the sure. very beginning, at the very least. And in this state, we need to be having an HR person involved and, and why. So we'd love to ask you about California. Um, sure. Why is it important to have somebody to work with an HR in California? Well, specifically in that most litigations, and I practice mainly in California, however, I have a lot of companies that spawn out because how difficult it is to do business here and employ people. So more often than not, in workers' comp scenarios, in unemployment scenarios, it is is almost by default an automatic for the state to rule in the favor of an employee. Why? Because if they're going to make an error, it's it's just like children. If you're going to make an error. You make it in favor of a child. In California, judicially, if they're going to make a mistake, unless you have a lot of documentation that supports your actions or inactions, they're going to make that mistake in the error of an employee. And they there's almost this an assumption, right, or presumption that the employer can absorb that, right? They they have more resources. They're um, more weighted to be able to recover, but an employee is not. And so that's almost the, the um, perception that any employer should assume in having employees is that if I get into an action with an employee, more often than not, I'm going to be on the shorter end of the stick. Unless I am really solid with foundation of a handbook infrastructure can account for it step by step. Now think about the small businesses that you know of that just run with the idea, run with the, we're making a profit, the visibility is there, da, da, da. They're focused, they're very distracted with all of that and almost halt when they receive litigation about an employee because then they have to think about what they did or didn't do, what they said, what they wrote, if they wrote it at all, that's essential. And so they're, they're really realizing in that moment, I've been present when an employer received a subpoena and just lost all the blood in his face because the, the steps and stages of what was even being asked to prove their position, he didn't have it. Yeah. And so it, it, it's, it's, it's not as much as about the numbers, it's more about your processes or the lack thereof that an employer needs to consider when it comes to defending or having to potentially defend that relationship. So an employee file essentially becomes a legal file, discoverable, and it has all the information from beginning, middle, and end of the relationship. So when people think about that times, however many employees they have, they realize they have a bunch of legal files in there or not, because that yeah. happens too. So you have a lot of entities that have an interest in what you're doing or not doing. EDD is one of them. Workers' Comp is a jurisdiction that no California employer can even operate without insurance, workers' comp insurance. And then it spawns, it just grows tentacles to equal opportunity, do you have a diversity program? Because we have now people that are protected classes. So it becomes almost so voluminous that they, I've had employers say to me, I, it's just one conversation with you just scared me because I, I realized I didn't have it and I'm subject to account for all of it. So we take it in small bites for that reason, because you can, you can only, slay one dragon at a time. A lot of my clients hear, clients hear me say that all the time when we're troubleshooting issues. 
and then I, they often say, well, some of them are two headed dragons now, what? But we can only do what we can do. And I think Paul had a great question when we talked, when do you start HR? Mm -hmm. The second you decide to hire someone, the second you open your doors and you hire someone, you need to have processes in place. Yeah, such an important point. And, and people, uh, you know, you don't have to insource it. You can outsource it, like and bring on board someone like Selena. But it's that's one of the things we do when we uh, initially bring on clients is go through, it's a SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Threats are external. And this is one of those threats that we look at specifically about where are you in terms of your HR expertise and resources? How do you handle an employee termination? How do you handle the onboarding process? And really dig into it just because of the legal exposure that uh, many small businesses, like you're saying, are unaware of. And it just mm -hmm. becomes critical that they not only document it, but they're genuine in their steps about mm -hmm caring for their employees because that Absolutely. will avoid a lot of legal exposure if you do that so i, I think that's I, such a great point about how do your employees feel about the infrastructure because there's a vulnerability that they have finding out that you don't have it mm -hmm. yeah. it's a trusted relationship right yeah so it's important you have a great story about yes. starting your business and mm -hmm. uh you know, Lisa and I both remark you're just so positive, enthusiastic, and and we often talk about that even with our own clients that they'll frame something negatively, and mm -hmm. we say let's turn it around and frame sure. it positive now. Mm -hmm. And so, so just share a little bit about how you got started because uh, sure. a lot of our listeners have come up and bumped up against challenges, and they immediately mm -hmm. go to the negative aspect mm -hmm. instead of the positive. But you have such a positive story about how you got your business started and even yeah. some of the struggles that you had. And where I started. So I started Six Degrees at the Starbucks on Copper Hill and Seiko. Many people probably remember me sitting there with my computer and, and this is before I had a, an office on Magic Mountain Attorney and I had um, con gone into a Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting and i just considered that there was so much opportunity in this community but where do i start so i didn't have an office yet but i had this skill set that was unique to me and i had a passion for it so i had to start something in somewhere so six degrees is a, a, a statement that is essentially meaning that we're all connected that's global and many years ago i was an intern and i was assigned to uh, the Clinton administration, and I heard President Clinton say that I may be the president of the United States, United States, but we're all connected by six people on the planet. And I became obsessed with that concept of understanding that if we're all connected, that means we all know and should know the same thing. If there's a continuity about your impression of me when you talk to the next person that knows me. So I felt that that resonated in the business scope of practice that I was in. And it meant something, especially in this community where we're really connected by one to two degrees. It didn't take us long to figure out who we were connected to. And so I started Six Degrees at Starbucks and Car uh, on Copper Hill and Seiko. Um, I would meet with clients there that were just getting started also and didn't have their own offices or wanted to speak privately. And I remembered um, realizing that at, the line kept getting longer. And I remember the baristas would say, you have a client <laughs> waiting for you outside <laughs> because they knew that I was consulting. And it was, it got to that moment where I realized I needed an office space and I had grown to that place, but I still run into some of them who are like, how six degrees? And they, they knew the premise of it and they knew that I was there to serve small businesses. And it grew, so I, that was in 2014. And um, you put in the work and, it, in, and you do it constantly and consistently, and it grew from there. And so Six Degrees started to evolve, and one small business would tell another small business and another small business, 
and it just became what it is today. And I could see beyond where it is now in the concept of, yes, this country is built on small businesses. The concept of six degrees does not have to be limited to Santa Clarita. This is the pilot, if you will, of the franchise, but six degrees is everywhere. HR mm -hmm. translates to every industry. Mm -hmm. And so why not Dallas? Why not New York? Why not? Uh, there's many small businesses from, you know, from here to the East Coast and Six Degrees has its sights on building that practice. And we talked about Supercuts. Yes, you can get a haircut anywhere, but Supercuts grew that way. The brand became the uh, kind of known for, you know, haircuts and families just said, why not? And so now you see Supercuts, which you can go to any barber. A lot of people ask me, well, why would, if you can get HR anywhere, then why would they do Six Degrees? Well, Six Degrees has established its brand recognition, just like Supercuts, and its integrity and being innovative about working with small businesses and understanding that impact to any community in the country. So Starbucks is a, a huge, I have a great affection for, especially the one on Copper Hill and Seiko, um, because that's where I got my start. The chamber actually had to bring me my first plaque there. And Betty Wynn was the ambassador and she called me and she said, "Where, where's your office? I have your plaque. I said, oh, I'm on, I'm at Seiko Copper Hill, you know, the, the Starbucks. And she's like, oh, I, I'm going to, to Starbucks to, to I said, yep, we're going to go there. And I, I included her in my video because it was a big moment for me to get that plaque and to say I was established chamber member. And yeah, you have to meet me in the street right now, Betty, but I'm still getting it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Selena, before we come up to our end time, because we could talk for a long sure. time. A lot of great things to talk about, and we wish mm -hmm. that we could. And we'll have a two-parter and a three-parter. Sure. It's an important conversation. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we um, ended up developing during COVID in this last year was uh, delivery of workshops targeted towards women in leadership. So um, mm. uh, some co-founding members that we got together under One True North with Women Empowering Women in Leadership. And I bring it up because it's so important in regards to, uh, you know, the bio that we read and you running for um, city council. Yes. Uh, our dad was a mayor of Glendale for a couple of times. He was on the city council for uh, a yeah. dozen years and he left it and he's still alive. So yes. in regards to the work that he did, we have a, a large impact in regards to service and community service. Absolutely. But I thought as a final question, it would be important to hear from you, your why in regards to that. Why is it important for you to be active in our community and leading in our community? Sure. Why is that important to you? I love that you said that. And I love that story about your dad because I have a very similar story. And my father left an indelible mark. He was a trailblazer like your father. He was the first African-American principal and superintendent. And he was of service. I wouldn't exist had my dad not served. He was in the Air Force, met my mom in the Philippines, married her there. So I'm of service just by birthright. And I remember the respect and admiration that people had for him, for his courage, not just to serve, but to serve when no one else had ever done it that looked like him. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say that representation is important. I have three African-American daughters that are watching me every day and they have seen what I've built and they understand just like I do their obligation to that legacy. And for me, it is because representation is important. We have a diverse community that since I've been here has expanded even more in that diversity. And I feel that, that it should be represented not just in the business sector, but in the service sector, which is really the antithesis of me running because those two things combined with what I did in response to COVID to support small businesses, small companies asked me to run for representation in that regard because small businesses were impacted more than anyone else and they wanted a voice in um, 
that recovery and that was at the time city council. And so having never been a politician, but served politicians, been a daughter of servicemen, and by virtue of what I do is service, it just made perfect sense. It was a evolution from all the experiences, education and goals at the same time. So I think that's why. And I'll continue to do that. I've been so um, appreciative of the outreach that you've given me to, to have this opportunity and platform to, to speak to that. But I've just, as you know, joined the board for the Heart Education Foundation, which again, coming from a father who's service and educator, mm -hmm. and I have student athletes, it was a perfect transition for me to serve there and bring something that I experience daily. Um, taking care of my girls and positioning them right. That's yeah. the foundation of the Heart Education Foundation. So yeah. that's so why. I'm glad, <laughs> so glad that we asked because it's really important for people to hear that. And that's a, a large part of why we felt it's important for us to establish uh, women empowering women in leadership. And one of our dreams in regards to supporting women in leadership, including supporting women of color in leadership. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. and, a strong support in that in our community for that thank you and that's important to hear from someone that is not of color that we have that support and i think my daughters who are more often than not the only ones that look like them on their teams or in classes know that they are embraced and respected and valued equally and that's so important that they'll hear that from you and so thank you for saying that out loud yeah well we're, we wholeheartedly believe that you're gonna make me cry lisa <laughs> <laughs> well thank you thank you so much again we, we could talk uh, and i know we will have follow-up yes yeah. because uh, as we believe there should be an hr person involved in every business yes. uh, and and we also believe that there should be a coach in every business yes. too because most business owners they're subject matter experts at what they deliver in a product or a service but not so much in regards to running a business yes <laughs> so that's where we come in and can help uh so love that thank you so much how can Absolutely. people find out more about you and your sure business? where can they go to Sure. So if you were to Google my name, the podcast will show up, but then also six degrees hrconsulting.com is another location that you can find me. And then, um, you know, it, it's important if you, if you wanted to show it at the end of the show, but my email is Selena S E L I N A P as in fall HR at gmail.com. So I'm happy to send you a clip of my card if you wanted to show that, but definitely if you Googled Selena Thomas, there's a, a lot of content there and, and I'm happy to um, field any calls or any feedback from anyone that is part of your, your viewers. Excellent. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Absolutely. It's great seeing you both. You too. And hang on there for just a minute. Paul has sure. some, a little quick announcement before we close out. Okay. Yeah. I always like to promote the Chamber's Small Business Roundtable. It's the second uh, Friday of every month, 7.30 to 9. We have a subject matter expert that facilitates a round table. It's for chamber members only. So if you're not a chamber member, we encourage you to join the chamber. And if you are a chamber member and haven't looked at the small business round table or joined it, uh, you ought to. Uh, you, it's, a, it's an environment where you can talk about your own issues. You can talk about the issues that the facilitator tease up. Uh, we have a promise with each other that uh, nothing leaves the room. So if you want to talk about a specific challenge, you can do that too. It's an environment, it's a no sales zone. So we aren't there to sell to each other. We're there really to help each other out and grow our businesses in the community. So I hope you take advantage of that. And that's again, is the second Friday of every month and it's a small business roundtable. Yeah, and then clo closing out, we would encourage listeners to go to onetruenorthcoach.com, find out more about who we are, what we do, and how we can help you. We've created a COVID-19 resource page with lots of really good, relevant information that will help you find your way uh, as we continue to navigate through COVID-19. We also have some really good, a library, I would say now at this point, 
You'll see this conversation, you'll see other interviews, you'll see articles that we write, uh, putting out some leadership tips that Paul does once a week. Lots of really good substance that we believe if you spent some time on there, you would walk away with a lot of value and can start taking action today with uh, something that would improve your business. So go to onetruenorthcoach.com and take us up on, your, on our offer for a business health checkup. No sales, uh, no sales zone, um, but it's an opportunity for you to get a free assessment from us, some really good questions that will stimulate your thoughts and help you improve your business. So with that, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you ever, everybody soon. Thanks, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.